ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul and in this Rickimpty.com video we're going to be releasing a bonus video because a bug has been discovered with Intel's processors and this is a pretty major bug as well. It could impact performance by up to 30% and affects all processors that have been released by the company over the past decade. Now just to clarify, this bug also is processor based. This is not something that Microsoft are at fault at or you know Linux developer or something like that. No, it is an issue with the design of the processor itself and it cannot be fixed just merely by a BIOS update, a microcode update. So uh, this video was not planned but a couple of people started to email me and message me, uh, Joe being the first one who emailed me regarding this issue so I figured we might as well discuss it. Now as I'm recording this information is still emerging. So I'm probably going to do an update on this over the next couple of days, but I did want to make you aware of it because not only is it going to affect home users, but it also is going to affect, of course, system administrators. So it's a fundamental flaw. I just want to say this right out, you know, get that right out there. And Microsoft are expected to introduce it to uh, the fix, by the way, uh, to the Windows operating system this month. And already we're starting to see patches for Linux and also of course Apple will also need its own update. So currently there are exactly two ways of fixing this. The first is a you know patch. The problem is the patch uh, incurs a performance penalty or the other way is to buy a new processor. So is it the kind of patch which causes your PC to be set? No, instead this is purely security related. However, it's not a small security issue. And once again, because it's down to the processor itself and affects kernel security, it's not something that simply updating your version of Norton is gonna be able to remedy. In a nutshell, it allows applications, and this could be anything from a high-end database all the way down to a simple web browser to discern contents of protected kernel memory. I don't want to turn this video into a computer science lesson, so I'm going to give you the synopsis here. But when an application needs to do anything, that could be anything from you perhaps asking it to open a specific file or whatever, it needs to hand over control to the, of the processor to the kernel. So when the kernel is needed, the program makes a system call, the processor then switches to kernel mode, enters kernel mode, then the CPU is switched back to user mode. So what does this bug do? Well, an actual uh, piece of information from Intel hasn't been released yet. They haven't officially commented on this, but AMD have uh, released a statement which tells us that A, their processes are not affected, but B, it also hints what is the problem on Intel side of things. I'm gonna read you out a statement from Tom Lindaki. It's not a statement actually, it's a, which you can find on lkml.org. AMD processors are not subject to this type of attack that the kernel page table isolation features protects against. The AMD microarchitecture does not allow memory references, including speculative reference, that, uh, that access higher privileged data when running in lesser privileged mode, when that access would result in a page fault. Disable page table isolation by default on AMD processors by not setting x86 bug CPU insecure feature, which controls whether x86 feature PTI is set, end quote. And currently, because there is an embargo on this uh, whole set of information of exactly what the bug does and how much of an impact it will have, we can only make some level of speculation, but it probably comes down to speculative execution. So it looks like it may be possible to craft a, piece, a specific piece of software in a way that the processor would execute an instruction that would normally be blocked, such as, for example, performing a kernel read, and then that instruction would be finished, but then the actual privilege check would occur. To put that into another context, a more real world point of view, if you're not too familiar with uh, computer science, think of it this way. Think of you going to an airport, you jumping on an airplane, going to a different country, going to your hotel, and then, you know, completing a few days and then, you know, you're halfway through your holiday and then you get a call on your cell phone and it's the airport from your country of um, 
origin and they say hey uh before we let you through the gates we didn't actually check to see whether you've got a valid passport could you do us a, a really big favor just take a photo of that that would be absolutely spiffy or to put it in a more advanced way, it will allow a ring free level user code to access ring zero kernel data. As one would imagine, people are scrambling like absolutely crazy. You've already got Amazon EC2, Google Compute, uh, Microsoft Azure Cloud, and so on and so on, which will be undergoing maintenance and reboots. And once again, the performance penalty is up to 30%. It looks like it's about 5 to 30%, according to some benchmarks which have already started to be tested, but we don't have those performance numbers officially released because, once again, embargoes. I will say, however, that the more up-to-date Intel architectures, this is a good news, by the way, are affected somewhat less than older ones. So, in short, you get screwed over less if you've got a more up-to-date architecture. I imagine AMD are absolutely rubbing their hands in glee at this because obviously, and I'm going to tell you the most obvious statement in the world, they've been really pushing the whole data center slash, well, desktop slash anything you can imagine. So it doesn't take a genius to figure that at various conferences or just in general now, they're going to take stabs at Intel however they can. I'm going to be very curious to see how all of this works because one of the, and I, I'm going to take, you know, desktops out of the equation because I imagine if this affects like the performance of Quake or, or whatever, you're going to be pretty upset. But imagine you're a data center and your clients have been used to a specific amount of performance from your servers. Now their performance could go down by 30%. They're going to be very, very unhappy. And that is me putting it in very nice terms. In short, for data centers that are already considering an upgrade to AMD, one of the reasons that Intel, and this is an almost ironic statement, one of the reasons that Intel have been so, so I guess the word concrete in data centers is because of the reliability of the fact that you know the performance, you know the compatibility, you know that you know what you have is going to work and all of that stuff. And obviously, that is very important for system administrators because system administrators don't want to deal with a server rack exploding or they don't want to deal with an emergency patch. Guess what? They are now dealing with a several hundred hours potentially of testing and benchmarking and figuring out what they can tell with clients. And also the good news is for the call center staff, they need to now deal with irate customers who are going to be screaming at them that their services slash server slash whatever is now running slower. But I want to stress that this information obviously is going to change over the next several days. So I will be keeping on top of this, but I did want to put this out now. I'll place links in the video description for more information on this stuff, but I'm going to leave you all to it. Take care of yourselves and bye for now.